Welcome in, everybody, to the Rebel Walk Baseball Recap, recapping Tennessee's series sweep over Ole Miss alongside Chris Moeller. I'm Bennett Ganey of Crunch Time Plays. And, and Chris, you know, brother, we talk, talked about it kind of last week I talk, when we talked about Tennessee uh, sweeping South Carolina, just talking about how you know, making the point that we thought they were the they were the top team in the country at, at that point just based on what they had done. And then they go to, they go to Oxford and, and get that series sweep. Over Ole Miss, it's hard uh, not to like what Tennessee's doing. They got the country's longest winning streak now in 15 games. They number one in the country in runs per game allowed, second in the country in in scoring offense at 11.1 <laughs> runs a game. They're they've got guys throwing uh, you know 103 all over the place. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to it's hard to to fathom what Tennessee's doing right now. I know Ole Miss fans are looking at this weekend. You know, kind of. Feeling really dejected about the series sweep, but this is this is baseball, and, and Tennessee's probably the top team in the country, and and you know, just can't let those errors you know compound on themselves, can't let those losses compound. So so really, they're it's a disappointing weekend, obviously, but but still a whole lot of you no know, not much optimism going forward uh, right now in terms of of Ole Miss fans, but as we get towards. This next weekend, I, I guarantee that there's definitely going to be uh, some more optimism around around Oxford in the baseball program. Absolutely, I mean, like you said, Bennett. I think Tennessee is just really, really good right now. There's there's no doubt. Um, they're going to be number one tomorrow. I I don't think you'll find a baseball person around that's going to argue that that statement that they are the best team in the country uh, coming coming into tomorrow. Texas lost. They were number two. Obviously, we got swept. Um, other teams, uh, Vanderbilt uh, lost two or three to South Carolina. So they are the most complete team, one to nine hitting. They, you know, five home runs uh, on Saturday, excuse me, on Friday night to, to increase their total to 64 home runs on the season. That leads the nation. Their pitching was outstanding this weekend. Uh, all of their pitchers went through at least seven innings. Um, putting goose eggs on, on the board against the, the quality of Ole Miss offense that is it, that is our offense. Uh, without Kevin Graham, obviously not having Kevin Graham in the lineup does hurt us quite a bit, but still our offense is able to put together a lot of runs and a lot of hits all the time. And their defense was really good too. Um, outfielders, infielders, everybody. I do expect them to go really, really far this season. Uh, they went to Omaha last year. I don't see any reason why Tennessee should not – Tennessee fans should not have that on their mind. I realize this is a, uh, an Ole Miss-centric podcast, but uh, Tennessee has got a lot to look forward to this year as far as their ball club goes. A lot of times on these podcasts, I like to talk about stats. Um, there's not really a whole lot of great stats to talk about this, uh, this week, so I'll kind of forego that. Offensively, we couldn't get uh, to the Tennessee pitching really until game three. Uh, true enough, Elko had two really nice home runs in the latter half of Friday night's game and Saturday's game for his ninth and tenth home run. And then the Dunhurst uh, three-run home run in the eighth inning to, today uh, made the game close to the eighth inning, but we just couldn't push push it over the edge. We had our chances um, throughout the game, including in the ninth inning, and really couldn't put runs across when we needed to except for in that eighth inning. Overall, 15 hits over the course of three games, and really we're not – that's just not going to – get that done in SEC play. You're not going to win a whole lot of ball games getting uh, four and five hit throughout the course of the weekend. Yeah, no doubt, man. And it's so, it's so interesting. You know, a lot of, a lot of fans will look at this weekend and, and, you know, obviously be pretty dejected by Ole Miss fans that is, but, but Ole Miss is still, you know, their offense is still, is still pretty explosive. I mean, 17th, in the country right now in runs per game, averaging 8.8 .8 runs per game. So the offensive of output is still going to be there uh, as long as you can get past uh, this weekend and the schedule, you know, moving forward is, is, is pretty favorable. These, these next few weekends for Ole Miss. So, so just really, you know, as far as me, you know, I would honestly, if I were, you know, an Ole Miss fan, I'd just kind of brush this weekend off, not completely forget about it because you obviously uh, want to know, know how it what it takes to to get there but but you know when you look at the the schedule these next few weeks it, it's really favorable uh for Ole Miss and you know any any time uh, you can average uh, eight runs a game like they're doing right now that's going to get it done most nights in, in the SEC and and especially in the midweek 
Absolutely. Like I said, I think Tennessee is just that good. And I don't think we're too, I don't think we're 12 to one behind them. I don't think we're 10 to four behind them as far as uh, a game goes. I just think the games got away from us a little bit. Um, things started to unravel and we just weren't who we usually are um, as far as that goes. Pitching wise, uh, Dylan DeLucia really showed a lot of length on Friday night in relief, going six and two thirds, throwing season high 96 pitches. And then on Saturday, freshman, two below freshman, Hunter Elliott showed a lot of length as well, throwing 94 pitches over four innings. Uh, we've talked a little about Hunter Elliott, and I had the opportunity to watch the broadcast yesterday, and Kyle Peterson was really, really high on Hunter Elliott as well. So I expect a, a I'm not going to say a big shake, shake up in the uh, rotation this weekend, but in postgame today, Bianco was asked about uh, the starter for Tuesday, and he even didn't, he didn't even name a starter for Tuesday. So I think that there's going to be some changes coming, and I, I don't really know if it's Delusia maybe, if it's Elliot, or, or where we're going to go with this. But like you and I talked last week, this rotation is not set in stone by any stretch of the imagination. We're, in, we're going into week three of SEC play, and the goal is to, to get ready for postseason. It's, you know, these, these midweek or these midseason weekend series are very important, obviously, for standings and for national rankings and things like that. But our goal is really to, to peak at the right time, and that right time is in June, uh, come regionals and things like that. So who, who knows? Uh, today, the, the Rebel pitching staff looked a lot better than it has over the last two days only allowing four total runs. So I thought that Derek Diamond did a good job, and I thought the, the relievers did a good job too, and then Johnson pitched the last couple of innings. So I thought that was really good. Definitely, man. You know, the offense has, has been, you know, it's great strength for, for Ole Miss the, you know, during, throughout the season. Obviously mentioned it, they score 8.8 8 runs per game. and But, you know, when you look at it right now as we stand, you know, two weeks into SEC play. Uh, what are some of the – specifically, you know, just as we get into kind of the, the baseball junkie kind of thing, what what are some – a couple of things that you think Ole Miss is doing really well right now? And obviously on the other side of the spectrum, what are those couple things, you know, just technically, you know, kind of as we dive into the weeds a little bit baseball-wise that, that you as, you know, obviously an Ole Miss fan, as Ole Miss Rebel Walk contributor would love to see – uh, Ole Miss get a little bit better at here in these next few weeks? Yeah, I think obviously we've got to figure out the pitching, the, the, the starters, uh, who's going to be the, the, the go-to guys as far as starting goes. And this then just being ourselves at the plate, being really disciplined. The, I, as a former high school baseball umpire and dabbled a little bit in the college, I don't like to dog umpires too much because I think that's kind of a cop-out. But there were a lot, it seemed like a lot of unfavorable strike calls that went against Ole Miss. I'm not going to say it wasn't both ways, but even even Peterson pointed out yesterday that there was a shin-high fastball. And I think I looked away from the TV just because I, I knew it was a ball. And they called it a strike. And I was like, what do you mean that was a strike? Uh, but the, the discipline at the plate, I think, is important, as well as just being who we are. And I think that, uh, that our dugout is a really optimistic dugout and a really positive dugout. And so not letting, not letting the game get away from us like we had on uh, Friday and Saturday. I think today's game, like I said, was a lot closer and a lot more manageable. I think we had the opportunity to win. You know, four, down four runs is, is not unmanageable. I, we've all seen Ole Miss come back from way down further than that. I'll look back to the LSU game three of last year where, you know, we had two home runs in the eighth inning, including the McCann's grand slam. And then we had Alderman come up and end the game in the in the bottom of the ninth. So four runs is not out of the question for this offense at all. So I just I just think we have to be where our feet are as far as that goes. Yeah, man. You know, you're right about you're right about not not knocking the guys uh, in blue too much because I know you you umpire baseball. I have uh, a lot as well. Coached it a lot as well. It's currently right now with my. You know, my nine and ten year old team, which obviously is not anywhere close to, to college baseball, what we're talking about right now. But, but so many, you know, it's interesting how if you've if you've done it before, if you've if you ever uh, been an umpire, if you have ever been around uh, that those type of guys, it, it's hard to, you know, I I try not to knock them as well, having been uh, one of them. It's hard to hard to knock the guys in blue too much. Yeah, they're, they're trying. 
trust me, they're not trying. There's no homerism that's involved on their part. They're not trying to to do one team wrong and in, in favor of another team. Um, I've, I've heard every one of those comments before. Um, they're not trying to do that. Uh, obviously, there are calls that go for you, calls that go against you. Um, it's part of the game. Unless we get rid of the human element of the game, and I don't think really anybody wants that. Uh, otherwise, the robots take over, and that's a whole different discussion for a whole different day. So I'm going to take us around the, the league real quick and then uh, end on a really, really fun note uh, for us today. Uh, State did take two or three from Alabama, at least. I think I was looking. They were, State was in the bottom of the nine, 6-2. So I don't know uh, if they lost that third game, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that they did. Uh, Auburn went down to A&M, took two or three in College Station. Arkansas defeated uh, Missouri, took the rubber game today. And then LSU back ended their series at Florida. So that was really interesting from a perspective of um, A&M having gone to LSU last week and taken the series from LSU, and then LSU being able to go on the road and take a series from a ranked Florida team in a back-ended uh, perspective. Kentucky defeated Georgia 2-1, to one, and then your South Carolina Gamecocks uh, defeated Vanderbilt 2-1. <laughs> to one. So congrats to South Carolina. Got off the mat a little bit this week. So congrats to them. Man, you know, we were talking about it before we started – you know, the show, you know, South Carolina is such a, a difficult team to figure out right now. Obviously, obviously, we still are looking at the midweek. We are not obviously not going to count those as much as the weekend, but but losing to Xavier in the Citadel in the midweek. And then, you know, you got swept by, by Clemson, got swept by Tennessee. But then you also have those those series wins over over previously number one Texas and now and now fourth ranked Vanderbilt this weekend so it's such a such a really difficult team to to figure out right now uh south carolina and and before we get to the to the fun note which i know is about you know, how the texas tech and texas series uh, went out of uh, this weekend which is a really really fun note about a player from texas tech that won both games uh, for them on the series i wanted to get your your thoughts before we get there about speaking of players about a couple of the players comments after the game on Friday night, maybe taking Tennessee a, a little bit more lightly than they, they should have. Obviously, Coach Bianca refuted that in his post-game press conference on Friday night, just saying that's not not why the, the Rebels lost the game on Friday night and then obviously let it compound into into Saturday and Sunday. But, but you know, to, to, kind of what are your what are your thoughts on that? I mean, to me, I kind of – I kind of – kind of view it as a as a nothing burger i mean it you, you seems like you just you just got beat it didn't seem it didn't really seem like uh, old miss to me was was taking tennessee a uh, lightly even though those comments were were somewhat interesting after the game on friday night i know that it gave a lot of old miss fans something to talk about on friday night after the game it did uh they were interesting comments uh head scratchers really just you know where where were we at as a team and then where were we at as individuals to say that? And, you know, one of the players, and it's not my style to, to call out players ever, um, but to after getting beat 12-1 on Friday night to, to go ahead and guarantee a victory on Saturday was a very bold statement, in my opinion. Um, I don't know that I would have, have done that. You know, I think that I'm almost sure that got tacked up on the bulletin board in the Tennessee uh, dugout on uh, Saturday and was passed around very wild or very widely. Um, but I, I think again, you know, we have to play where our feet are and we have to, um, we have to be ourselves. And I don't find Ole Miss to be a, a, a team that says things like that, that, that we're just going to, we're going to beat you. You know, I, you can say that in a funny way and it, it'd be really fun and interesting and cool. Doug Nikhazy was really good about, about saying things like that. And, it came off very uh, authentic and very uh, real. And I don't know that everybody has that same, same thought process and same um, inflection tones that, that Doug did, that he was able to say these things and to where, where they weren't ruffling the feathers, they were more, you know, I'm going to try to build the confidence of my team up. And so I really don't know how to, to, to look at it. It'll be interesting to see moving forward um, when we do face adversity, how questions or comments 
um, that are made by the media are taken by players and, and what's done with them. So I'll just leave it at that. I think we've learned a lot of things about ourselves. I hope we learned a lot of things about ourselves over the course of this weekend. And perhaps that's one of them. And if it is, then I'm not disappointed at all. Yes, that's definitely true. And, and the the fun note that we wanted to get to to, to kind of close out the show tonight, obviously, was, was Texas Tech's Kurt Wilson winning those two games for Texas Tech pretty much, you know, single-handedly over the weekend with those two plays that he made, obviously, stealing home on on Friday night. That video uh, was going viral, I know, and, and also the Grand Slam on Saturday that he hit uh, to win the series against against Texas, certainly a, a highlight of his, of his weekend and definitely probably going to be National Player of the Week uh, this week if, if, I, if I had a vote at least. Yeah, if I had a vote too, so no doubt in it. Um, you know, I think just special for that young man to be able to, to you know, steal, steal home at any point in time during a game is just a remarkable thing. If you follow John Boy on Twitter, he had a breakdown of the, the pitcher and it was really kind of cool. The guy definitely had some tendencies where he would he would come set for three seconds uh, with his head down and then look up and then go to the plate. Uh, the third base coach for Texas Tech either figured it out or had it scouted or something. But boy, did he know it, when to, when to send the guy and the pitcher. You know, if you look at the video, the, the breakdown of the video, the pitcher just slumps his shoulders once he figured out what just happened because he looks up. And he's like, I don't understand why everybody's going crazy. And then he just slumps his shoulders because he's figured, you know, he puts all the pieces to the puzzle together as the guy's, you know, 10 feet from the batter's box and he can't do anything about it. And then the grand slam on Saturday, just from a college baseball fan perspective, you really can't get much better than that for a young man and, and the, 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 just the, the fun of the game. And we talk about growing the game of college baseball and it's, it's the, it is the third sport of the three major sports when we talk about football, basketball, and baseball. But if people will just give college baseball a chance, and I'm talking to the choir here because the people that are watching this broadcast are already college baseball fans, but, you know, get your friends to watch this stuff because it is just really cool. And these athletes are, they're not in it for the money. They're in it because they love the game. You know, we can talk so, at some other time about 11.7 scholarships and what all that means. But it's uh, these athletes are, are they're playing because they love the game of baseball. And it truly shows in things like a steal of home to win a game and a walk off grand slam and just the excitement that, that these young men have uh, when stuff like that happens. I know it's not SEC baseball, but it's, it's college baseball. And to me, that's just as much fun as anything else. No doubt, man. But college baseball is so so awesome. Yeah, if you're obviously every anybody that's watching this is is probably a, probably at least a probably a diehard college baseball fan. But but get like Chris said, get people to watch it because it is it's a sight to behold, and it's it's something that you know it's it's it rivals you know, football and basketball in terms of the excitement that it provides. And and I you know we obviously we can definitely get into the eleven point seven scholarships at a at a later date. Obviously that that's way too low. But you know, Chris, as we wrap up the show, as always, like we did last week, tell everybody where they can find you on social media, tell everybody where they can read your work, check out the rebelwalk.com for all of Chris's work and all of the, the fine folks over at the rebelwalk.com. But but tell everybody where they can find you on social media as well, brother. Yeah, I'm on Twitter at Rebel Inc., R-E-B-E-L-I-N-C, and you can read my articles. I do games one and games two, uh, typically for the Rebel Walk at therebelwalk.com or the, at the Rebel Walk on Twitter. No doubt, man. And once again, I'd like to thank the Rebel Walk for giving me this opportunity to talk some college baseball with Chris. Obviously, Crunch Time Plays, as you know, is the show that, that we've that we've grown over the, over here and, and talking all things college baseball football and recruiting one-stop shop for all things college football and recruiting but if you love recruiting spring foot we obviously we got spring football but all these 2023 guys are making they're starting to make commitments starting to release top 12s and top five so we've got all, everything covered with with graphics over there at crunch time plays make sure you follow us on social media as well at plays crunch to get all that if you're a if you're a college football and, and recruiting junkie but for all you college baseball junkies out there really hope you enjoyed this edition of the Rebel Walt Baseball Recap. 
Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube to the Rebel Walk. Make sure you read all the articles, including Chris's, on the rebelwalk.com. And we'll look forward to seeing you again right here next week on the Rebel Walk Baseball Recap. God bless everybody.